Okay, so we are all Lamed Aleph Amud Bays. It's 31B, isn't that right? Yes, it is, 31B. Okay, so we, we began this on Friday, um, outlining what the Gemara is about to do. What the Gemara is leading us is down is as follows. The Mishnah stated that um, if one witness testifies that they saw this woman and this guy, the paramour, engage in intimacy, then the Saita law is called off. And it's called off because the, the premise of the Saita law is that we know they were behind closed doors, but we don't know what happened. And then the drinking of the waters will determine what happened. That's the premise of the Saita law. So once we know what happened behind closed doors, there's no reason for the Saita law. The uniqueness of this circumstance is that considering that we already have grounds for the story because we have witnesses that they were secluded and there's a warning and we know the history of the couple and so on and so forth. So even one witness who tells us that she was in intimate is enough to call off the site of the law. That's the uniqueness of the law here. What happens? Something clicked in the middle of the night. Mm. What happens to this guy who's married to this woman and he suspects that she's yeah. Uh, being secluded with somebody else, and he calls in a friend to check to just to as a as a like witness. a yeah, and then he dies in the process. So husband dies. Yeah. Move on. Nothing to do. She gets the whole ketubah. She gets everything. Right? She would get the ketubah. Depends at what point in the process. I I, I suppose if he dies after. There's already the seclusion, then she wouldn't get the ketubah because it's already been established that she was secluded. Then she would lose her ketubah. We learned it earlier. This is what my memory is telling me. Yeah. yeah. Let's go backwards. Okay. So now the Mishnah said like this If one witness said, I saw them being intimate, and another witness comes along and says, No, I was there the same time you were, and nothing happened. So they cancel each other out. That's what the Mishnah stated. And if they cancel each other out, go back to square one in which we know they were secluded, but we don't know what happened behind closed doors because there's conflicting testimony. And therefore the Saito law continues and let her go drink the water to determine what happened. That's what the Mishnah said. Now where the Gemara is going to lead us down, it's gonna go through a little bit of a roundabout way to get there. But the, what, where the Gemara is gonna take us is to the following point, which is when Terida says that a single witness is, is believed, we treat that single witness as if it was two. And therefore, when someone comes along and says, I witnessed so-and-so be intimate with so-and-so, the status of that testimony is as if two people were standing here and said that. Mm -hmm. So when one person comes and denies it, we should treat it not as one against one, but as one against two. Because Tyra gave this person the belief of two. I, I was thinking about it over Shabbos, especially as I mentioned, we're learning now, we just finished learning in the study cycle of Rambam, the three chapters a day, just finished studying the laws of testimony. So it, it dawned on me as I'm reading that, that the same thing is true in the plus. Torah decided that two witnesses is the way uh, uh, an event is established. So whether you have two, three, or a hundred, by Torah law, it's equal. So if in Torah law, if you had a hundred witnesses telling us the event happened in such a fashion, and two telling us the other way, they are treated equally in terms of their believability. Because that's Torah law. Once two have come and said something, that becomes an established truth. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you added three, four, five, ten, or hundred doesn't make a difference. Mea katre tre kamea. Two is like a hundred, and a hundred is like two. So the same thing is true. Then the Mishnah, the Gemara, is telling us about to get to is if the Torah decides that we're going to believe one person, he's treated as if it was two people here. And when someone comes and denies what that original person said, he wasn't the person who denies the intimacy wasn't given the status of two. So why is it an equal uh, cancellation? The original single guy who comes and says, I saw intimacy should be treated like two. This is where the Gemara is going to get to, that question. Until it gets to it, it's going to take a little bit of a detour. So let's see how the Gemara's detour goes. The one that's equal to two actually is... Saw the one, saw, saw the intimacy. The intimacy. Right, right, the other guy right. says, I was there with you, and you know you didn't. Right, got it. Right? 
But, but the guy who saw the intimacy was given the believability by Taira as if he was two people. So can you give this a short, long way? Yeah, so the, the Gemara's I think is a little bit of a roundabout way to get there. It's going to like build some premises first, and then it's going to ask that question. Okay. But, but Rashi at the beginning tells us where we're going with this, so it's, you'll see, it, it's better to understand this in advance. Yeah. Right, that's what Rashi tells us. No, oops, I'm looking at the wrong Rashi. Yeah. So let's see. So the Gemara first quotes the Mishnah, which read, Eid um, Oimer Nitmus. It's in between two sets of um, uh, colons at the end of a line, about five lines down from the Gemara. So it's on the other page there. Lamar Aleph the Gaze, yeah, there. And you'll see under the words, under the big Gemara, count you know, seven or eight lines down, you'll see two sets of, of uh, colons. Okay. So the Gemara quotes the Mishnah, which reads, One individual says, I saw them be intimate. And then the Mishnah goes on to say that if another one comes and says, no, you didn't, cancellation, and therefore the, they cancel each other out, and therefore they start to lock and things. So the Gemara is like this, Taima, the reason why this person's testimony was discarded is because the, the Kamat Fishle, huh? Because this guy comes along and undermines the original guy's testimony. That's why we're canceling it out. But, but if nobody else comes along and denies what the first original witness said, then the single witness is believed as we've established. So the Gemara uses this scenario, again, to lead to our next, our main question, to first ask a different question, which is, from where do we derive that one witness is given special believability if he's coming and testifying to their intimacy? Right. Now, we already went through some of this, but the Gemara is going through this again to make it to its main point. Okay, to Tan Rabbanon, for we've learned in a Mishnahic age text, which reads, the verse says, Ve'eid Eimba. The, the verse reads, in describing, we mentioned this in the Mishnah, in describing uh, the fact that we don't know what happened behind closed doors, the Torah says, and there's no witness to what happened behind closed doors. No witness in the singular. This is how we derived that if there was a single witness, he believed, because the, the Torah describes the lack of knowledge as there is no witness. Now, the, the, Mish, the Mishnah text now is going to dig a little deeper and ask, Perhaps when the verse says, and there is no witness, don't translate it as there is no witness in the singular, but translate it as there is no testimony. Now a testimony is only when there's two. And therefore when the, when the verse says, we don't know what happened because there is no testimony, it actually means there is no two people, which means one person coming along would be useless. So it undermines the reading we had. The reading we had is the verse says, there's no witness. Okay, well, if there's a witness, even in the singular, sight the law is called off. But if we change the translation to there is no testimony, thus meaning two people, then only if two people arrive, then we cancel the sight of law. But if one person's here, no, keep on going because we don't believe one person. Right, obviously, it's not the end of the discussion. Because right, the end of the discussion is that one person is believed. But the Gemara is digging deeper into the reading. Okay, so Atta Imer, you suggested Bishnayim, that the translation of the word there is no witness is not witness in the singular. But there is no testimony, meaning there's two people here. Maybe it means literally there is not even one person, as we've been translating till now. There is no witness, even in the singular. So we have a verse elsewhere which says, with respect to the law of witness, the law of testimony, no single witness should come forward and establish an event against someone else. Okay, so now what does that mean? If the, if the verse says, let's get the exact words of the verse. There shall not establish a single witness against the man. The Gemara, the, the Gemara is saying that the verse could have dropped the word single 
And Kurja said, there shall not establish a witness against a man. And that would have been enough to tell us that's one. Why say a single witness? So therefore, from the fact that the verse says, do not establish a witness, do I not know that it's one? That one person is not enough? Why does the verse have to say a single witness, adding that word a single? Just say witness in the singular, and I know it means one. Therefore, this then literally means builds a father or builds a principle. Uh, I've been asked to point out whenever the Gemara uses one of the 13 principles. Here it's using one of the 13 principles. One of the 13 principles that we read every morning before Haidu, is Binyan Av. Binyan Av is when the verse goes out of its way to state something and describe something in a more precise manner, it means it's telling you, look at this verse to define what we mean everywhere. Right? Otherwise, it would just describe as is. But if it goes out of its way to add more details to the description, then that means, well, we're defining this for you. So you know that whenever we say this elsewhere, this is your definition. Now, that's what the Gemara is saying is happening here. By the verse saying, a single witness shall not establish an event, instead of just saying, a witness shall establish, not establish an event, adding that singular, Zebanaav, this comes to establish a principle throughout all Torah, which is, Whenever the verse says the word witness, it should be considered as two. Until, unless the Torah specifically points out that it's one. Right? Because the verse says, do not establish a testimony by a single witness, what that means is, had I not told you the word single, you would have assumed there's two which therefore establishes that whenever the Torah uses the word aid in the singular, it doesn't mean a single witness. It means a testimony, which is two. And therefore, if the Torah must be telling us, today, Lespa, this person, when the Torah says, we have no testimony as to what happened behind closed doors, there is no two witnesses. But there is one. And what is that one coming along to say? And this is a new reading in the verse, which we haven't had yet. Um, and, and it takes into consideration the next words. So the, the verse is like this. Till now we've been describing that the way the translate the verse was, that the verse is coming to inform us that we don't know what happened behind closed doors. And how does it say that? By saying there is no testimony. Now we're translating it that way. There is no testimony. Then the verse goes on to say like this. The aid einba, and there is no testimony. The hilo nisbasa, and she wasn't raped. Which means, if there's a testimony to her being raped, then they said the law again is called off. It's, it's not her problem. It's, it's, not, it's not her issue. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. We're not going to blame her or hold her accountable for this. She was raped. Now, if we put these two things together, so that means, there is no testimony to her being raped. Well, how would we know if she's raped? Ah, because one witness came. Thus giving us the believability of one witness. So it's a little bit of a deeper reading to the same verse to come to the same conclusion. So as the Gemara says, the Torah is telling us, today Lespa, by telling us there is no witness, which we're now translating as there is no testimony. So we don't have two, but Elachat, we have one. And what's that one person telling us? He learned his boss, she wasn't raped, meaning she was consensual. And if she's consensual, it's off. Even by the testimony of one, considering that the verse just finished saying, there is no testimony of two. And therefore, Surda, because she wasn't raped, it was consensual, and we have that one witness, she's forbidden to her husband, and certain law called off. So having established this, now the Gemara gets to its original question, which we, which we introduced before. If biblically speaking, this one single witness is believed that she consensually was intimate behind closed doors. Idach, the other single witness who was not given that believability by Torah, how could he counteract them? If we just finished establishing that there's a unique law 
considering that we have two witnesses to there is a seclusion and we know that there's a warning and there's no there's trouble in the marriage and so on and so forth so even the single witnesses believe that there was intimacy so Torah gave this guy believability when the next guy comes along and says no you didn't see it Torah never gave that guy the believability so it's two against one and as we've been explaining Gomer Ula Ula says whenever Torah comes along and gilded and gives believability to a single witness, we consider it as if there's two. And in the words of one witness who's telling us there was no intimacy has no value in the face of two witnesses represented by that one guy's tired of believability. Okay. Is it a function that the one that's equal to two is testifying against? Sorry? Is it a possibility that the one who's equal to two is testifying against, whereas the one is not equal to two, he is testifying? That's what happened. That's what's happening. Favor. That's what's happening, right? Because the guy who's saying the single guy who's, who, has, who has the ability is testifying against that she that she was willfully intimate. Right. Whereas the other guy is denying that, but he's not given that believability by Torah. Okay. So we're stuck. Why does the why does the Mishnah then say? that she goes along and drinks the start of the water because it's because the two of them cancel each other out and therefore because ula who just stated for us this principle that whenever Torah allowed gives believability to one person we treat it as if there's two so he therefore has to actually amend the text of the mishnah and says ella amor ula ula therefore says tani you should read the mishnah adding one word the word loy no loy hoysa she wouldn't drink the Saita waters. Because we indeed believe that guy when he says she was intimate, Saita law called off. So even though in our reading of the Mishnah it says she does drink the Saita water because the two of them counsel each other, Ula says it's got to be a mistake in the text because if Torah gave believability to the single guy is two, then the one guy coming and denying it has no effect. And therefore this one guy who says she was intimate is believed and therefore Saita law called off. And add the word loy. No, she did not, she did not go ahead and drink the water. And Rabbi Yitzchak also supports Ullah's contention that the Mishnah is, um, there's a typo. And we should add the word, Loi Haisa Shaisa, she would not drink the water. The Saita water is not the, the, the whole thing. Because it, it could be wrong too. Sorry? If she's got merits. Yeah, we discussed that already earlier. Yeah. But for now, we're going to assume that the Saita the site law. Just stands by itself. Sta- yeah, yeah, we have to assume that way. Yeah. But it's not true. Not exactly not true. We discussed it earlier. I know. Yeah. Anyway. That's what I'm asking. I, I, I can't go beyond what the Gemara discussed already, right? There, there, there was that opinion which said that merit doesn't help for this very reason, right? Remember that opinion? Because of Shimon. It could help also. Sorry? The merit could help also. According to one opinion, it doesn't help because of what you're arguing. Yeah. So let's just see what doesn't. Anyway. Okay, so what do we have here? We have so far that because of how strongly Ula believes that when Torah says a single witness is believed, it's considered as if there's two. Therefore, when one single witness is given, is given the believability that he saw intimacy, therefore we must amend the text in the Mishnah to read that once one person comes along and says she was intimate, the sight of the law is called off, and therefore add the word loy. Loy hoi sashay sa. She would not drink the sight of water because it's called off. And the Ritzchuk supports Ullah's position. But for Rabchia Amar, Rabchia says, no, don't change the text. Leave it as is. Haisa shaisa. That if one witness comes along and says, I saw intimacy. The second witness comes along and says, no, you didn't. They cancel each other out. So the Rabhiya kashad Ula. Rabhiya's position seems to contradict Ula's correct position that when Torah gives believability to one person, it's as if there's two. So one guy comes along and says, there was intimacy believed like two, and then one other person comes along and says no, and Abkhiya says, no, cancel each other out, how is that possible? So says the Gemara Kasha, this is not a question. Because it depends on how these witnesses came forward. Kan bebasachas, kan bezachaze. Here, when we say they cancel each other, is if they come together. Which means, within the same breath of one witness saying, I saw intimacy, this, another one is saying no. So we never have time, 
right? We never had time to, 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 to cross-examine the single witness and establish that, yes, he's saying the truth. And because of that, the, the two of them have equal. But if they come one after the other, in which one person comes forward and says, I saw intimacy, we cross-examine. And the Bezdin says, okay, we believe you. And as per Torah law, this is considered too. The next person comes and says, no, you didn't see it. We're sorry, but this testimony has already been established as two because we cross-examined. But if the two of them are yelling at us at once, one guy saying, I saw intimacy, and in the same breath, they're saying, no, you're not, you're lying. So we've never got through the process of cross-examination to establish that he's believed, and therefore they're equal and cancel each other out. So the end is, we don't have any dispute amongst the sages. We just have a dispute as to how to word the Mishnah. But in law, there's no dispute. Everybody agrees that once a single person is established as believed, believed as to, and if another guy coming, can't cancel. And everybody agrees, if they're speaking at once, we haven't established them, then, not, then, then they cancel each other out. It's just a question of which of these two cases is the Mishnah speaking of. And that would tell you, you put the word lawyer or not. That's all. But in law, everybody agrees. So it would seem at least from where we are right now. One says you were in the you were at this bar. Who the husband or some random guy? A witness. A witness. Witness, yeah. You have one witness who says I saw. Yeah. Okay. But one guy comes along and says, You didn't see her because you were with me and two other guys in the uh, in the restaurants. Right. So to, oh so two, if there's two witnesses, then it's a different story. It's a different story. But now you now you have now you have two against two. Because the original guy the single guy treated as two, the next two are two. So in that case, they cancel each other out. And if we said the law continues, but I'll go even further, because what you just described is a unique law called Adim Zomimim, which is, th there's different ways you can, you can, um, uh, you, can uh, you can, what's it called, deny someone else's testimony. One is you can say that event never happened. You say the event didn't happen, and I say it didn't happen. That's one way. So I'm denying what you said. Then there's another way, which is what you described, which is there's no way you could have been there because we saw you somewhere else. In that case, there's a unique law in which Torah gives the believability to the second set of witnesses who say you were with us somewhere else. And that witness who testified against someone else and has now been established by new witnesses to have not been there at that time, he gets the punishment that he tried to inflict on that person. That's the law. It's the law of Asian Zoneman. In the case of the Saita, it's very difficult to say ha, 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 what kind of punishment would, she, would he get that's similar to what he tried to do to the woman. Mm -hmm. So in that case, he gets lashes. Actually, it's in Rambam from a few days ago as well. So that's a good point. But that's a unique kind of uh, contradiction. Where not, he's, where he's not contradicting the testimony. In other words, the new set of witnesses is saying, I don't know what happened. Maybe that, maybe that event did happen. But I know you weren't there. Right? That's not the same thing as saying yeah. what you said didn't happen. Because we were there and it didn't happen that way. Right. Just continues along. That's right. So here we're talking about specifically where they deny each other's witnesses. Not that they, the second set is not saying you weren't there. The second set is saying I was there and it's not how it went down. Right. So it's a different kind of contradiction. Okay, so now having established that the law remains the same, it's just a question of which case is the Mishnah speaking of. The Gemara is now going to, tomorrow, the Gemara is going to look at the rest of the wording of the Mishnah and see if we can deduce what would be the right reading in this case. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the Gemara gave, the Mishnah gives a few scenarios of contradicting testimony. And based on the wording, we can establish, well, what was the Mishnah speaking of? And that will, we'll have to do that exercise, God willing, tomorrow. Is there a law, was there a law in those days to say that? What are you, what are you doing? Looking at watching a couple having really <laughs> you have no reason to be there. You shouldn't. No, but you should yeah. be you should be prosecuted. Well actually you actually prosecuted. actually you're, you're right. And the Gemara says that anyone who sees a Saita should become a Nazar. That's right. No, no. He should become a Nazar. He should separate himself because he's obviously hanging out you're in the right. wrong places. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, but at the same time, his testimony is still a testimony. Yeah. If he's proving to be a valid witness and so on. This is after the seclusion. This is someone walking in by accident, or it's not by accident, they're saying. Even if it's not by accident, 
even if it's by accident, if you accidentally walk into such places, you're hanging in the wrong circles. It's such a place, it has to be like. No, I, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm just asking. You're hanging around such circles. Well, there's people who do these kinds of things. Okay. Like this is about a story. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get you graphic. Okay, have a wonderful day, Eden. <laughs>